Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for how much you love and care for us and how how much you truly desire for us to have that intimate relationship with you. I am praying, Lord, that with each and every video, through this chapter especially on hearts, that people are becoming healed, that you are touching them, that you are helping them, that you are holding them and carrying them, and just allowing for the tears to flow if that's what they need to do. Lord, that when they are on their knees fervently in prayer with you, that the tears just flow. Because, Lord, sometimes there just are no words. But you, being all-knowing, totally understand where the tears come from and why they are there. And for that, Lord, I am extremely thankful. I am so thankful that we can come before you with specific prayers as well as silent prayers as well as our prayers of just tears and yes Lord sometimes those are not just tears of pain and suffering but believe it or not more often than not they are tears of joy just rejoicing in everything that you have done and that you continue to do and Lord I just pray for the day where people can come to understand and know you as I do that they may come to understand you and know you better than I do, so that, Lord, I can continue to learn. I thank you for this heart for learning. I thank you for helping me to keep my heart a teachable heart. I am just in awe of how much you are sharing with me through this video series. I am so honored, so humbled, and yet so thankful that you have called and chosen me to do this for you. Again, I just pray, Lord, that my words will continue to be your words and that my thoughts will continue to be your thoughts to guide each and every person watching to have that closer, intimate relationship with you. I pray all this in your Son, Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. All right, guys, we truly are coming to the close. I think there's only three more, three, two, three more scriptures yet to go on this chapter if you will the strategy on our hurts turning bitterness to forgiveness and it is a work in progress this is something that most of us have to do at least for myself have to do on a daily basis and it really does truly break my heart watching those closest to me struggle with this knowing that the freedom if if they would just allow God to reside in their heart not just give him thanks for certain things in their life, but truly let him reside in their heart. Just the transformation would get so many people's attention and, and bring so many others closer to God that it, it, it would rock. It would rock this world even more. <laughs> Today's scripture is Luke 17 verse 4. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. Hmm. Kind of comes from the heart as well, does it not? Again, are you one of those who sins all week long, repents on Sunday, goes back the following week and does the same sin over and over and over again? God knows your heart. He knows how truthful you're being. He knows if you're just saying it because it's the right thing to say or if you're actually doing it because you truly mean it. Some of us can see that. Some of us cannot. So if someone sins against us seven times in a day, then seven times back to them, when they say, I repent, we, we, we're called to forgive them. That's what we're called to do. Footnotes on this is so so touches home sometimes. This okay. All right, again, this is uh, Luke 17, chapter four. If you want to go on to another scripture to help kind of reference or help you to understand what's going on, uh, the side notes here say you could also go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. 
Just wanted to share that with you. All right, footnotes, study notes. To rebuke does not mean to point out every sin we see. It means to bring sin to a person's attention with the purpose of restoring him or her to God and to fellow humans. When you feel you must rebuke another Christian for a sin, check your attitudes before you speak. Do you love the person? Are you willing to forgive? Unless rebuke is tied to forgiveness, it will not help the sinning person. I have a friend of mine who, it's, it's actually, it's, <laughs> um, just interesting is the only way I can say that. Uh, something was said negatively. I'm not going to repeat what was said because I full on rebuked it. I would not accept that, that, that which was spoken. And again, we're made in God's image. And if we are made in God's image and he spoke creation, what makes you think that if you speak it, it won't come to pass? Hello? Let me repeat that. We are made in God's image. If God spoke creation, as he did, into existence... What makes you think that if you speak it, it won't come to pass? So this person said something that I totally rebuked because I just, hello, we're not even going to go there. You, you're not going to speak that over anybody. And they, they joke about it today, but it's, <laughs> I'm not rebuking them. I'm rebuking what they said, but they like to say that I'm rebuking them. It's kind of funny, interesting, kind of, actually. Back in the section under family, if you go back and watch some of the videos, I, I tell you guys, if somebody is speaking negativity over you, they are just cutting you down, they're... Uh, I don't know, I can't even think. I've, I've been training myself for the last nine years to not speak negatively over people. That, thank God, I struggle with trying to find the words for you guys for that. But I, I, in those videos back there, I tell you to totally rebuke what they say to you. Rebuke it back to the pits of hell where it belongs. Because those negative, non-inspiring, non-motivating, non-encouraging things that they are saying or speaking over you... You're not rebuking them, you're rebuking what they said. Because Satan was using them to attempt to plant a seed. But again, if, if they're going to sin against us seven times a day, and seven times back to us they say, I repent, we are instructed to forgive them. But it goes back to the heart of the matter. We, God knows in your heart if you are truly repenting of that sin or if you're saying it just because it's the right thing to say. So if we are made in God's image, what makes you think that we can't recognize when someone is truly repenting for what they've done? Or, or like how I tell my children all the time, you know, are you truly sorry for what you did, or are you just saying you're sorry because that's the right thing to do? Because you say I'm sorry all the time, yet you continue to do the same action over and over and over again, which tells me you truly aren't sorry. And I tell my kids, instead of telling me you're sorry, how about you show me you're sorry? How about you change your actions? How about you go to God and ask him for guidance to change your actions so that you don't even have to apologize because you won't do those actions anymore. You won't do those things anymore. Right? Again, we're made in God's image. Do not speak negativity over me, my family, or my friends. I will rebuke it back to the pits of hell where it belongs. And it's really interesting because the person who sent this does, does not remember what they said. 
which means I was in with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit when I totally rebuked that back to the pits of hell if they can't remember what they even said. Do you understand what I'm saying? Satan was working through them to attempt to attack me, my family, and or my friends with what they said. I hope somebody's getting this. Okay? It says right here to, to, you know, to rebuke does not mean to point out every sin we see. I don't, I don't rebuke other Christians for that. I don't, I don't do that kind of thing. But if you're going to come at me and you're going to speak negativity over those, over myself and those that I care the most about, I am going to rebuke it back to the pits of hell because I know to whom I belong and I know to whom they belong. And you are not going to do that to them. And you shouldn't be allowing other people to do it to you or to the people you love or to the people you care about. Again, the only way this world is going to change and turn around is, is, is when we start working on ourselves and our families. So instead of going out there picking all the negative stuff up and spreading it, how about you focus on encouraging one another, inspiring each other, motivating each other to do something positive with each other's lives? Lord, Lord I said I won't go there because I know that's not you. That's just, just not you. And if it is, then another video it will be. God has created each and every one of us for a special task, for a special season, for a special place, a special purpose, and a special plan for our lives. But in order to do that, we need to follow his instructions. Remember, this is in the red. So this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times back to you says, I repent, you need to forgive him. God forgives you. God forgives me. We're only human. We slip and we fall. We make mistakes. The difference is, is that we get back up and we ask God for forgiveness and, and he helps us along the way. We're not stuck down there. Come on, guys. I, I, I Seriously, I hope someone is getting this. I, I really do. Again, it says in here, when you feel you must rebuke another Christian for a sin, check your attitudes before you speak. Do you love the person? Are you willing to forgive? Do you love the person? We should. We're supposed to love our enemies. We just learned about that, what, two videos ago? Three videos ago? Whatever that was. Love our enemies. Pray for them. This, according to the notes, and what I can understand here from what I'm reading, is, is a Christian to a Christian. A fellow believer to a fellow believer. We all get stupid once in a while. We all fall off the bandwagon, if you will. We all trip, stumble, and fall. A friend of mine told me the hurdle. That was the word I was looking for in one of those other videos. We're on the track and we're running and we get our foot caught on the hurdle. We all do it. It's what we do afterwards that God is looking at and watching upon. Are we truly repentful? Are we truly asking for forgiveness from the heart? Do we truly want to move on? If we truly do, then God has forgiven us. And if, I mean, this basically says, in my humble opinion, that it doesn't matter who it is, when they sin against you, they repent, you need to forgive them. But for those of you who continuously go out there and do the same thing over and over and over and over again, we are created in God's image and we will know whether it's from the heart. And the time will come where a choice has to be made. We still love you, we still pray for you. And we have forgiven you, but it's time for us to move on. Until the next video, guys.